We've had a lot of viewers express interest in learning more about our Gunworks Long Range Shooting Systems and the G7 Ballistic Compensation uh, products and methodologies that we use to shoot long range on our show. Uh, we're going to take just a few minutes to start off with some fundamentals about long range shooting. Uh, we're going to talk about ballistics and how that applies to compensating for long range. Let's start with a basic rifle's trajectory and we're going to look at the drop that a rifle has over uh, your target range, let's say out to a thousand yards. Now that trajectory is based on a few parameters, uh, ballistic coefficient, muzzle velocity, and air density. We're going to use altitude and temperature to represent our air density. Now your ballistic coefficient, or BC, comes from the bullet manufacturer. Uh, they're they're going to build a bullet that has some caliber, length, shape, uh, and even the, uh, the weight of the bullets incorporated into that ballistic coefficient. Now the muzzle velocity number comes from your cartridge, which could be uh, the cartridge case size, you know, ultra mag or standard magnum or just like a 6.5-284, you know, kind of a standard case size. That case size plus the chamber, bore tolerances and barrel length is going to dictate what your muzzle velocity ends up uh, looking like. Uh, you can measure that with a chronograph within some degree of certainty. Uh, we're going to show you a, a technique to find precisely what that profile looks like. Now we've got this uh, uh, trajectory. And this trajectory can change based on any of those parameters. Let's say you have an air density change. It's more dense. And take a look at how that affects your altitude or temperature. Lower altitude or lower temperature is more dense air. And when the air is more dense, the bullet isn't as efficient flying through the air. And so we see that your trajectory is shorter or you would hit low on the target. You also retain less velocity. Or if we increase the ballistic coefficient, let's say, and the ballistic coefficient is up, now our trajectory is flatter. Or even more, we can increase our muzzle velocity and really get a flatter trajectory. Now that's some of the parameters that make up that ballistic profile. And we need to talk about how that applies to our ballistic compensation. Essentially, we've got a, uh, a calculated trajectory now that we've researched the muzzle velocity um, with a chronograph or out of a reloading manual and we've got the bullet manufacturer's BC. We can set that up for some air density configuration and then go out to the field and shoot it and we find that the actual field shooting results is slightly different than that calculated profile. Now this is a big difference and this is probably the, the, the significant step in setting up a long range shooting system. You have to be able to calculate the exact ballistic solution at any point if you're gonna compensate and shoot for that point. So if we've got a variation here, we need to fix it. We're gonna do a simple trajectory validation and that's gonna change that calculated uh, trajectory to match the field results. And you can do that by manipulating the muzzle velocity slightly or the ballistic coefficient. Uh, I'm gonna to choose to do the muzzle velocity because I'm not confident that my chronograph measure is completely accurate. So in this case, we've changed the muzzle velocity to match. Now I have a true ballistic profile. That's what we call it anyways. This allows us to plug those parameters into any ballistics program and calculate our exact trajectory. That's the, that's the fundamental step in shooting long range because now for any range, any target, incline, air density configuration, I can calculate my ballistic solution. Now we need to know how to apply that ballistic solution uh, in, the, in the field to our shooting equipment. So let's look at a rifle right here and then let's look at a rifle scope on top. That rifle scope is your aiming uh, tool. Basically, you've got line of sight to your target, and we're going to elevate the barrel on the rifle until the bullet drops in and hits our target properly for height. Now, one way to do that is to use a reticle system and just hold that barrel higher and higher and higher by holding the different stadia. Or we can use a turret system and tile that uh, elevation turret on the scope and change the angle between your line of sight and your rifle, uh, rifle barrel. Uh, that's the system that we usually prefer to compensate for elevation. And conversely, we usually hold left and right with our reticle for compensating for wind, just because it's such a variable factor. Now, those two uh, mechanisms uh, work together pretty well. Uh, we've got a calculated trajectory, and we've got these adjustments. Uh, there's a couple more tools that we can use that makes it easier to keep track of those numbers in the field and also to calculate real-time solutions. The first is a G7 ballistic turret. Now this turret has numbers on it 
that represent uh, the range to your target, the yardage range to your target, and you just dial that range, uh, or you've got the G7 rangefinder. Now this device is pretty cool because it measures your air density, measures your incline, and then calculates a real-time ballistic solution based on your muzzle velocity and your ballistic coefficient that make up that true ballistic profile, and it will calculate a real ballistic solution either in minutes of angle, which is just the angular, ang angular amount that your scope turret dials, or it'll do it in a shoot-to range, like a BDC turret where it's calibrated in yards, like the Gunworks G7 ballistic turret. Now, that's the G7 ballistic compensation method in a nutshell. We'll start with a ballistic profile that is a true ballistic profile based on real shooting results. It's been validated and compared against actual shooting. And then we'll use the G7 ballistic turret and the G7 BR2 rangefinder to calculate real-time solutions in the field for different air densities or different inclines and apply that with the G7 ballistic turret to make a simple elevation adjustment to our rifle. Uh, it, it's a very simple system, but it has some very complex backgrounds and some very simple but necessary steps to get the information required. Hey, we've just got one of our LR1000s out of the box. We, on top of it, we've got one of our new G7 Night 4 scopes uh, with one of our etched ballistic turrets to match this rifle's uh, trajectory. Um, and then we've got our G7 BR2 rangefinder. Now these, these three things combined make one of the easiest, uh, most usable, long-range weapons available right now. It's as easy as getting it out of the box, getting it to the range, uh, range finding a, a certain target, dialing your yardage, and, and pulling the trigger. Now this rangefinder comes into play big time because what it's going to do is allow you to make some real-time corrections out in the field uh, to get a firing solution that's going to match for that specific temperature and elevation and incline. How we're going to do that is we're going to input some ballistic information off of our turret into this rangefinder. We can do that for you at the shop. It's easy to do. Um, and once that's done, this rangefinder is a, is a perfect match with this rifle. Uh, there's two ways that we can have that output for us uh, and, and to use this system. One, we can have it output in a corrected range based on our turret, or two, we can have it output in MOA. Our favorite way is with the BDC turret. Now, once we have this information programmed into our turret, we're going to range that object, and it's going to give us a line of sight range, okay? We're going to wait one second, and it's going to tell us exactly what to dial our turret to. So it's compensating for us. It's making that real-time calculation and it's giving us a shoot to range based on our turret. That object might be 900 yards away, but because we've got this particular turret on, it might tell us to dial something completely different, let's say 800 yards. So it's giving us that real-time correction based on our setup. It's easy, you just one button push, get the range, dial your turret to that range, and get ready to pull the trigger. You know, if you need to hold for some wind, we've got a mechanism in here that allows us to hold over on the reticle for a certain amount of wind. Um, the other way that we can have this rangefinder output for us is in MOA. Now our new G7 turrets, you look, they have the MOA printed around the bottom. For guys that want to practice at, at some super long ranges and uh, that want to shoot past their turret, uh, that's available now. Instead of running your handheld, we see these shows on TV and, and uh, uh, different scenarios where guys are taking all this environmental um, properties, inputting them into their calculator and coming up with a firing solution. We've eliminated the need for all those gadgets. We've put that right into the rangefinder. We can range the target at, let's say, 1,300 yards. It will give us that MOA output uh, to dial to. So uh, that's where those MOA numbers are going to come into play. We've got 1 through 20 on the bottom. Um, so if we needed to dial 30, we'd go around once and then 10 more. That would be 30. So our rangefinder is going to output uh, for our BDC turret, our bullet drop compensating turret, or it's going to output in an MOA firing solution to shoot past our turret if we need to. So those are the two ways we use it. Uh, the BDC mode is probably the most convenient when you're hunting and, and things are happening fast. All you want to do is push a button, dial it, and shoot it. When we're in the MOA mode on our rangefinder, uh, that usually means we're past uh, one revolution on our turret. 
Um, that's where this rangefinder comes in handy again. Once we have our firing solution, we can hit one of the arrow keys on the side and it's going to give us our windage hold based on a five mile an hour wind, hit the button again for a 10 mile an hour wind, all the way up to a 50 mile an hour wind. That rangefinder is going to tell us how many MOA we need to hold inside of our reticle. So we can just range it, dial it, hold over how many MOA hash marks it tells us to do it, and pull the trigger. So let's take just a few minutes and break down some of the major components that make up any rifle system, specifically uh, our Gunworks rifle system. And we'll look at some of the processes and techniques that we use to make sure that we have an accurate, uh, a consistent, and a shootable rifle system. So let's start with the, the probably the most significant part of a rifle, and that's the barrel. Now, we don't manufacture our barrels. We receive a barrel in a blank form like this that's pre-contoured. When we take that barrel and fit it to a rifle action, what we're going to do in our shop is set up a barrel in a, uh, uh, a lathe that is CNC controlled and allows us to cut very precise and, and very high quality surface finish and very repeatable dimensions on our thread tenon. Now this shoulder and thread tenon screws directly into the action and then we also cut a bolt bore recess uh, and a chamber and the chamber is what accepts your uh, rifle cartridge so your cartridge actually fits inside of this part of your barrel. Now the final operation on a barrel is the, uh, the crown, cutting a crown so that it's square and protected. Once that barrel is fit to an action then it's a simple matter just to assemble it and uh, ship it out to the, uh, take it out to the uh, uh, blasting room, uh, spend some time prepping the surface finish and then pass it over into the uh, coating room where we put a two-part ceramic finish on, the, on all the metal surfaces that are exposed to the elements. It reduces corrosion. Now we're, we've basically got a rifle action that is very similar to a Remington Model 700. Uh, same spacing on the bolts, uh, same trigger assembly, uh, we use the same magazine and feeding assembly. A little different ejection port that's been relieved to allow uh, cartridges to eject a little better and we, we've moved the bolt release up to the side of the action. Now the bolt fits pretty tight. It is a one piece bolt that is machined from stainless steel. Uh, the bolt handles are bent and then we, we do a removable threaded on bolt knob. The extractor is an M16 style extractor. Uh, we do flutes to help keep the bolt clean when we're passing it through the action. The bolt face has a, a controlled dimensions for the firing pin and uh, firing pin hole fitments and then just a standard ejector plunger. Bolts are hard chrome coated with arm alloy and that gives us a, a hard finish that uh, won't gall if we ever run dry on our action. Uh, trigger assembly is a jewel. Uh, external adjustment you can access for weight of pull uh, without getting into the rifle system, without tearing it down. These are nice to install. They're the most expensive trigger you can get on the market and they have a kind of a different break the way the, the sear breaks. Uh, it, it releases uh, some tensions a little different than a standard sear. Finally, we've got a, a scope ring and an extra dowel pin hole on our action that uh, matches up with a pressed fit pin on our scope rings. We found that the, the G7 scope is so consistent on point of impact. Uh, the guys over at Night Force test those and, and have proven that that scope will maintain point of impact every single scope. Uh, we had to beef up our system to keep up and we put that pin in there, it's press fit and there's basically no chance of motion or movement with that scope ring even before I have my, my, my screws in there. And finally we've got uh, uh, the chassis system and rifle stock. We need to assemble our barreled action into the rifle stock. You look at this stock, it has a hunting style profile. It doesn't look like a big tactical stock. It has a nice wide forend that's easy to hold in your hand and also sits nice in a set of bags. It has a really comfortable grip. It's a palm swell. You can see there's a lot of relief on that. That palm swell allows you to get really comfortable without torquing on that grip and causing point of impact change. Nice cheek piece to support your face and it has a quarter inch of drop on the comb from the heel to the nose so that when the stock recoils it pulls away from your face. We use a CNC machine to uh, inlet for the different barrel contours and actions and our action chassis system. And we'll pass that through the machine operations. Uh, we, we install the aluminum chassis system 
and the recoil pads and we end up with a stock that's like this that's ready for our final assembly to put all the components together. Now that chassis system basically just mates up with the action. It's a V-block that uh, centers up the action and then uh, the recoil lug recess uh, prevents the recoil from moving. We, we actually lock that recoil lug in so the action doesn't bounce around in the uh, stock when you fire it. Uh, put it all together and that system's complete and it's ready for that G7 optic. Now, to, uh, to finish our system, we'll take these rifles out to the range, we'll break in uh, the barrels, we'll put 70 to 80 rounds through a gun, breaking in the barrel and then shooting all the long range uh, ballistic data so that we can set up and calibrate the uh, ballistic turrets and the G7 scopes. So we put a lot of work into the system even um, after we have that scope mounted and that rifle package completely put together. In our next segment, Mike Davidson has a long range rifle system set up uh, in a field shooting position and he's going to show you just a couple techniques that we use to make sure that your rifle that's shootable and accurate gives you the performance and the consistency that you expect. Now there's a couple uh, uh, shooting techniques and, and tips that, that will help you become a better shot in the field. Uh, you don't need to carry all these gadgets around with you. We've got it all right here in a nice little package ready to go. Uh, we're going to try to uh, duplicate what, how we shoot on a bench. We're going to have a front support, we're going to have a rear support. This rear support is very important to making these long shots. Um, you're going to practice your breathing. Uh, you're going to practice your trip. Your you're going to practice your trigger pull. Um, you can dry fire your gun as much as you want. That trigger is going to be uh, your best friend here pretty soon. Now, proper body alignment is very important. A lot of guys will approach their rifle from the front. Snipers like to do that because um, it, it gives the less of a target to shoot back at. But when we're hunting, that's not the best situation. I like to take more of a sideways approach to my rifle. Uh, that allows me to kind of drop my shoulder into the, into the buttstock here. And it brings the left side of my chest up off the, off the ground just a little bit. Kind of keeps your heart from beating so hard, uh, especially when you're chasing that big buck or bull. So it, you roll your shoulder down into your stock, uh, two-point support, front and rear. Uh, you can squeeze this rear bag just for some fine adjustments. Give it a couple practice dry fires, and, and that's how you become a good shot, is just practicing your, how you're going to shoot out in the field. Probably the most important thing that you're going to learn how to do is determine your wind speed and, and direction, how to dope your wind. Now there's a few things that we use that, that make that easier for us. We've got a, a wind meter. Um, that's going to measure wind speed. How we'll use that is if, if, I'm, if I'm gonna shoot in this direction, all I'm caring about is the crosswind component. What's blowing across my bullet's flight path? I'm gonna take that wind meter and just point it right at that object and get the crosswind speed. Now, uh, that's a pretty good indication of wind speed and, and unless there's some environmental mountain or, or canyon or something that's going to change that wind out there halfway to my target, I'm going to go ahead and shoot for, for this wind speed right here. Okay, so it's pretty, a pretty simple tool. Uh, the other thing that we can do um, as far as uh, determining the direction and if there's any change in wind is, is watch our vegetation. We've got some grass right out here in front of us. You know, it's, we've got a little left or right crosswind here. I can look through my spotting scope downrange at that target and see if the vegetation's moving the same way. If it's different, then I know I might have to, to make a correction there. The third way that we determine wind speed, and this is probably um, my favorite and the most useful to me, is watching the wind, the, the atmospheric distortion, the mirage. Now, you get mirage from a difference in the air temperature versus the Earth's temperature. And so, on uh, most days you have it, some days you don't, so it's not going to work for you. But there's a couple ways we can determine wind speed and, and also definitely direction using the mirage. If we have a mirage that's, that's just boiling straight up, you know, we have either no crosswind, and we might have an updraft, but we have no crosswind. Um, if we have that mirage angling upward at a 35 to 45 degree angle, you can count on a five to seven mile an hour wind. If you have a crosswind or a mirage that's just blowing straight across your flight path, 
you know you have at least a 10 mile an hour wind, if not more, that's when your wind meter will come in handy. Again, we've made this as simple as we can. You range it, you dial it, and you, you hold for wind if you need to, and you pull the trigger. It's that easy, and it's that fast. We made the simplest system out there for compensating for wind and for elevation. Hey, we appreciate you watching. We've had a fun time building this show. We hope that we've helped you uh, understand more about long range shooting, and also, I hope we've encouraged you to, to get out there and practice and do some long range shooting. It's a lot of fun and it's going to change the way you hunt, it's going to change the way you shoot. I'm Mike Davidson with Gunworks and if you want to see more long range shooting tips you can go to our website gunworks.com or don't forget to call Gunworks and request a free DVD.